And we're live. No. No. We might be live. We might be live. But in the event that we are, hello and welcome to Awesome Hardware. This is episode three. I'm Kyle. And I'm Paul. This is my colleague Paul, and we have a good show for you guys today, obviously. Just good, not great. No, it's not. Don't get your expectations up too much. Expect the utmost mediocrity. Just, I mean, if nothing else, we're, we're starting a little bit later. Uh, yeah. This is actually the first week we've broadcast a start time for the show. Right. Um, so, naturally, so we, we missed it by about 25 minutes. Yeah, we will, we will go back, do some more R&D, and uh, yes. be back with a more accurate presentation next week. But uh, for now, uh, we do have an announcement before we get started into our various segments. Um, that is, that being our, our good friend Josh from Fractal Design. As most of you guys know, he's a very advocate. He's a huge advocate of Twitter and stuff. He's, he's kind of uh, graced himself with his presence. Uh, also also good. Us. Also good friend. Not great. Good friend. That's right. I'm just kidding, Josh. <laughs> You're, you're thanks. fantastic. Thanks, thanks for all your support. <laughs> um, but uh, he is doing a pretty cool discussion tomorrow um, he's doing a live stream with I the Greek. So at uh, at seven o'clock uh, Central Time. That's Central, right? CST is Central Time. I believe so. Seven p.m. CST. You can interpret that however you want. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be discussing how to approach vendors um, on on Twitch TV slash I the Greek. Uh, so on I the Greek's YouTube um, Twitch channel. Sorry, uh, but it's going to be a really interesting discussion targeted at smaller and or aspiring reviewers. Uh, tech tubers like like myself and Paul, um, tech bloggers, tech vloggers. Uh, he's going to be going over several topics that are really interesting, such as like the best practice for approaching vendors when you're asking for review samples. Something that I know I was really I had no direction at first when I started doing this whole thing. Um, but I've had a lot of success with leg humping. Leg humping. Yes. Is, I'm going to steal that one. See how that goes over. It's like, hey, how about a new video card? <laughs> no. <laughs> How about now? How about yeah, now? Yeah. Okay. Video cards everywhere. So in addition, he's going to be doing some Q&A live for you guys as well. So uh, definitely they're going to be covering a multitude of different topics. Um, but it should be a pretty sweet stream. So go ahead, check it out. Again, 7 p.m. tomorrow. That's Wednesday at uh, CST. CST. At uh, I, I, I the Greek. I left, I left all the details to you on this one, Kat. I know. So. No, you know, I have them right here. I have them right here. So uh, go check that out. I'll type it in right here. Twitch.tv slash I. I the Greek. Greek. Make sure I got that right. I the Greek. I the Greek. Yes, that's it. So uh, I, I might even pop in for a bit um, while it's happening. So pretty sweet. Uh, okay, on with the news or on with our segments. Uh, my first segment, this is a new one to the show that I kind of just thought of on the way over here. Actually, I got to Paul's house and I was like, I, I should think of a new segment. And, did, <laughs> and it just popped in my head. Uh, this segment is called Hot and Heavy Hardware. Yeah, and I like uh, it. as you might have guessed, it's about porn. No, I'm just it has nothing to do with porn. Um, it's actually about hardware. So Paul Paul has very much experience with hardware. So you'll like this segment, Paul. <laughs> I hope I do. You do I have mean, a channel dedicated to it. That's true. That's very true. Yes. I, I have no excuse other than to like this segment. All Embrace right. It. Uh, so um, first off, basically the segment is, is focused on hardware. And uh, the first bit of hardware that I have today is the PowerColor Radeon R9 290. PCS Plus. PCS Plus? No, I think the PCS Plus is Power Color Super Plus. Power Color Special Pet? Power Color Sexy. Sexy Plus. Whatever it is. I like, um, that's sexy. I think we'll go with sexy. So, so the Power Color Sexy Plus Radeon R9 290. Now, right. Kyle, what is it about this R9 290 that makes it special, unique, or different from other R9 290s? I'm glad there? you asked that, Paul. I have just the answer. But first, I kind of wanted to speculate as to why this is even an article being brought up in the first place on uh, Hexus. I believe I got this on Hexus. Um, but essentially, AMD is trying to target that sweet spot between the GTX 960 and the GTX 970. Okay. I think uh, what the article was kind of alluding to was that NVIDIA has been under a lot of scrutiny lately um, with their R7, <laughs> with their with their R70, um, with their uh, GTX 970, with the, the whole frame buffer thing, the whole issue uh, four gig versus three and a half gig. Okay. Of course, there was a huge huge fire over that, as well as the GTX 960 just not really meeting up, living up to many people's expectations as far as not, um, not, not being a huge performance over the last generation predecessor. 
Uh, so I, I guess AMD is trying to capitalize on it with this particular card. Um, and mm. it's supposed to meet those those kind of sweet spot requirements between the two as far as price to performance goes. So um, just a little bit about the card. It's it's uh, retailing for about 280. I saw it on 280 uh, at 280 for for um, for for that price on Newegg. So that's a good 40, 50 bucks less than a than, than a 970. 970. Right at retail. Yes, and it's um, quite a bit more than the 210 dollar price tag of the GTX 960, but performance is just through the roof comparatively speaking. Uh, and and they were able to hit uh, performance pretty much on par with an overclocked GTX 970. Okay. So that that was really good. Um, not not just a stock 970, 70, an overclocked 970. Overclocked 970. Beautiful. Big differentiation. So that's really cool. <laughs> Four gigs of VRAM, which uh, everyone's going to be happy about, especially you know again given the whole 970 debacle. Um, four gigs, four full gigs of video RAM that it'll be able to pull from. Uh, it's a two and a half slot cooler, so it's it's pretty beefy. It uh, spans the entire 290 millimeter length of the card. Uh, so it does, you know how like some PCBs kind of extend over the cooler yeah. uh, and vice versa. Uh, this is the, the actual full length. It's a two and a half slot cooler and it has five thicker heat pipes. Didn't say how, how wide the, the heat pipes were. I'm guessing they're- It has a backplate. Probably eight millimeters. Yes, it has a, uh, <clears throat> a metallic backplate. The cooler is made of plastic, um, but pretty nice backplate. Reference specs of the R9. And it's, this is kind of interesting too, because I think how much was the R9 290X when it when it first retailed about a year ago? It's like 500 bucks or the something. The 290X when it launched was 550. Right. So yeah. this is this is scaling back quite a bit. Prices have dropped dramatically, which is nice to see. Um, and it's just <coughs> it's a beast of a card in terms of factory overclocking. Uh, it still uses an eight and six pin PCIe connector, uh, and they've even added some glue to the VRMs to um, mitigate uh, what is it? What's it called? Coil wine. Coil wine. Yes. So I hate coil, coil wine. It is the worst. It's, it's the worst ever. It should not exist. Um, plastic tray, metal heat pipe, blah blah blah, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. So I don't want to ramble on too much more about about this card, but it is quite compelling given the uh, the benchmarks that Hexus was able to run and, and, and get on it. AMD has proven that in the absence of actual new silicon or new GPU architecture, they they are quite adept at taking their existing hardware juicing it a little bit, usually with some type of custom uh, cooling solution, and then rebadging it as a new card. Um, now, there's another debate to get into over that practice as a whole. However, if it helps them stay competitive with NVIDIA, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. And um, definitely a 290 uh, is a really good price to performance card from the get-go. So taking one and having it overclocked out of the box and having a, a better cooling solution, I think, is a win. Yep. So, uh, yeah, is, it, is this out now? I, I didn't catch that. Yeah, you can buy it. Is it available? Yeah. Okay, cool. Everyone go buy one. It was sold out on Newegg already, but I think you can still buy it on Amazon. Really? Using my or Paul's affiliate link. Yes. <laughs> yes, either of ours. Hashtag or both of them. Or both. Buy two. Yes. Crossfire. Buy two of everything on Amazon and use. <laughs> All, right, All right, so moving on with the uh, the segments, my next piece of hardware. What is the segment called again? We need to hammer this home. Hot and heavy hardware. I hope that didn't that peak too much. That was good. That was very enthusiastic. Kind of. mm, now we need some good graphics right. to, to throw up there. So we'll get that to that later. We have uh, we have an SSD? Yes, we do. Uh, an SSD news. Crucial MX200. Um, successor to the ever-popular MX100 I series. I really like the MX100. Me too. They're they're always like... It's like such good bang for the buck yeah. in terms of SSD, say the three stuff. Um, so... Basically, you're looking at three different models, 250, 500, and one terabyte models. Okay. Um, and you'll notice that with the MX100, they, they were actually a little slightly higher capacity with 256, 512, and a little bit higher than a single terabyte. And that's due to this new caching technology that they've implemented called dynamic write allocation, which can essentially use a spare NAND in performance single bit per cell SLC mode rather than the usual two bits per cell MLC. Okay. Um, so that's that. So that's why it kind of cuts into the capacity, and that's why there's slightly less, fewer gigs on each of the drives, respectively. But uh, the end result is is theoretically faster throughput. Yeah, that's a, that's something you see pretty frequently with with SSDs. Is using part of the NAND itself, um, but using a MLC uh, bit or a cell uh, as a SNS LC cell uh, has gained more popularity. I know Samsung also does that with the uh, Evo. the Evo. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty effective. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a that's a cool way of doing things. And I'm just I'm just happy for uh, affordable SSDs, and that's what the MX100 was really, really all about was giving you 90, 95 performance, 95 uh, percent performance of the highest end SSDs, yeah. but coming in at a much lower price. Right. And uh, yeah, 500 gig SSDs 
Or uh, even ter- I don't have a terabyte <laughs> SSD yet, but I, the, but I'm so happy day. about them. Yeah. And uh, this is good. So and this it, uh, should hopefully drive. Uh, also, maybe the prices of other SSDs down True. even further as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's also saying something that they're not even making, they're not even bothering with a 128 gigabyte model now. Oh, no. <laughs> Just because it's, the price has gone hundreds. down so dramatic. <laughs> Actually, but, I was going through my old SSDs because um, my wife's old computer that's handed down to her dad uh, had an OCZ Vertex 2 that failed mm-hmm. and uh, I, I had to find a replacement. I was like, oh, I need to find a replacement. Um, and I have a couple two, 250s around, but those are more useful for me. Um, yeah. So I was looking there and I have like a couple like 30 gig SSDs and 60 gig <laughs> SSDs and I'm like, they have nothing to do with these. I, they're, they're good. They are good for Intel smart Caching. response yeah. technology. For that sure. that I will say. So, um, yeah. So there's nothing. That's don't don't just toss away your old SSDs, even if they're low capacity. But. Right. Or you know what? Even if you don't have uh, Intel Smart Response, you could also use it just for a cache drive for like Premiere. Oh yeah, that's, that's what too. I use my 64 gig Crucial M4 for. Stuff. Oh yeah, just that to have another f- free SSD on there. Yeah. Um, that's that's another good solution for it. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. All right. Moving on to the next one. This is the last one in on the list for hot and heavy hardware. Got to drive that home. Uh, now, for every two good products that I talk about in this segment, I got to talk about one that sucks. So this is the Mad Cat's Surf R. Surfer. Surfer. Should I become a CNET? In- no, I, I shouldn't. Okay. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, but I thought this was kind of silly. It's a gaming controller for Android consoles and mobile devices with a built-in QWERTY keyboard, huh. um, which kind of sounds cool in conception. But I think uh, the review that, that CNET was saying is that the uh, the, the, a, the joysticks there's, there's a, a joystick commercial. on each side that's too small to really game effectively if you have average or larger size hands. That is a very but, small joystick. But if you take a look, you'll see that like the A X and, and B buttons are directly circled around the joystick. Okay. So it actually saves space on the controller, which I thought was kind of innovative. That's interesting. And it might even allow you to, to hit them a, a bit quicker because they're all equidistant to, uh, away from the the joystick. Um, and it's going to be 60, 60 pounds. Which, 67 bucks. About 67 dollars $67 US. US. Yeah. Wow, the conversion rate has really... It's going... It's The gap is... It used to be 60 pounds was at least like... A thousand. A thousand dollars. <laughs> um, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I like, I like but, the Android. I don't game much on Android, so I guess neither that's do why I. I'm not quite... Neither do I. And, and the reason why I even consider this in the first place is using it for an article is because I imagine the possibility of using it for an HTPC. Ah, yes. That would be kind of cool. So it's just it a, for Windows and It's just a, like a USB nub that, that sticks in there. Yeah, I think it, the, I didn't say if it was radio frequency or Bluetooth, but... That's a good question. Um... Something to find out. But there. yeah, I mean, if it was for an HTPC at sixty-seven bucks, I would I would definitely consider it. Yes. Especially because I like the, the key layout. I like how the keys are kind of spaced out. Like there's like a millimeter or two of spacing between them, which probably leads to less frequent typos and stuff like it's that. It's nice to have a tiny little wireless keyboard for uh, for an yes. HTPC, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely and for sure. And that concludes hot and heavy hardware. All right, beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. That's All right. So great job, Kyle. We, we, we managed to do it without taking our clothes off. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next segment is also a new one that uh, I kind of thought of. Wait, before we go on to the next segment, <laughs> quick plug. At the end of this video or towards the end of the show or the part two of the show, we're going to do some Q&A. So um, mm-hmm. tweet, tweet some questions to us uh, at our Twitter handles, which are down here below. I'm also kind of trying to monitor the chat and grab a few questions out of there as well at the same Perfect. time. Um, but, yeah, we're going to ha- take some questions at the very end. Awesome. So thanks. Okay. Good plug. Good plug, Paul. All right, so this this next one is called Build a Rig, and uh, you guys may have seen this done on other YouTube channels. I know Logan was doing this for a while, where he would he would upload a video. No one's ever done this before. No one's ever done this. It's completely, completely original re- and unique. <laughs> but I had a dream once that Logan did a video on it, um, where he basically takes a, a use case scenario PC and basically just picks out the parts for it. He doesn't actually physically gather them together and build it, but he'll he'll like go on websites and and pick out parts for it, whatever it may be. So today's today's segment revolves around a four hundred dollar gaming PC. So I thought that was a pretty four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars, not I, not including I, operating system. I have no precedent for this. I didn't I didn't look at any of this stuff. Paul has not seen anything. I just kind of threw this together, and this is the best I could find. Mm-hmm. I, I for lack of time mm-hmm. and the due to time constraints, I just kind of went to Newegg. You can may, maybe find some parts cheaper elsewhere. But I managed to get it right at three hundred and ninety-nine dollars and ninety-four cents. I was very proud of myself. That um, is very. You're using up almost all of your money there. I know. I know. That's that's okay. the point. 
So and no I'm one just can gonna see go... the price though. There's the price, guys. Three ninety nine ninety four. So I'm just gonna go down the line. Actually, I'm gonna start with the the CPU and, and and move on to the other components. But the CPU of choice that I went with was the uh, the uh, G thirty. What is it? Thirty two fifty eight. Yeah, thirty two fifty eight. Thirty two fifty eight. Very popular processor in this price range, which is kind of unprecedented for Intel. It's a it's a dual core, three point two gigahertz, but it's unlocked, so you can overclock it, mm -hmm. which is awesome, and it's seventy dollars. So I thought this was kind of a unique, um, very niche type of CPU that would work well in something like this. And because when I think gaming PC, I think overclockable. This is exactly <laughs> the CPU that I was talking about. Um, this is also the 20, 20, 20 year, 20 year anniversary celebration anniversary CPU. Edition. So yeah. super cool. I, I was really excited to put this in the list. Uh, and the motherboard of choice would be the Biostar H81 NHV3. So 1150 socket, of course, um, 30, 40 bucks, 40 bucks for an 1150 uh, LGA H81, of course. So it's it's obviously not uh, Z97 or anything the like that. The chipset's cut down a little bit. Yes, um, exactly. But on a micro ATX, you, yeah. lose, you don't have quite as much space anyway. Right, 40 bucks for a motherboard, and and I also did check. I did uh, factor in like user reviews uh, okay. into this too. So if I saw this something says... that got one egg, even though it might have been cheaper, I still opted for the better better reviewed product. Um, which I think is very important. Uh, and then additionally, memory. I went with Mushkin. Mushkin offers really decent performance for the price. I always feel like they're they're like kind of like crucial in that way as I'm, far as memory goes. I'm not keeping up. I'm reading reviews on that motherboard. Okay, so, <laughs> Mush, so we got a Mushkin uh, two gig or two by four gig kit. Yep. Okay. Eight gigs, pretty standard nice. uh, at 1600. Not too shabby. Uh, SSD was the uh, 240 gig um, PNY Optima nice. for just 90 bucks. SATA three synchronous mode. Um, I, I was actually surprised to find that. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And then as far as video card, now this is going to be like the people who will either be like, yeah, good choice, Kyle, or people will be like, no, you should have cut resources elsewhere and saved more money for a better card. I went with the 250X. Now, keep in mind, $400 <clears throat> gaming PC. Yeah. And I wanted to make, I wanted to get a, a processor that was overclockable, at least dual core. So this is the, the video card that I was able to come up with. It's a $100 card. Um, and the reviews were actually quite good. I don't know if I found the reviews on Newegg or elsewhere, but um, I, I checked the benchmarks and I was like, okay, if you're playing at 1080, <laughs> even if you play some AAA titles, maybe bump it down to medium or low, and you can still get a pretty decent gaming experience. People were relatively happy with the card. XFX is a pretty well-known brand, and that's that's just what I went with. Uh, two gigs, two gig frame buffer, 128 gig bus. So, you know, great for 1080, I suppose. 128 bit. Obviously, you can't max anything out, but you can't expect that from a $400 system. Uh, and then, lastly, uh, Intel stock cooler, by the way. I didn't add a, an aftermarket cooler to keep costs down. And lastly, the case I went. Uh, I feel like the, the case, in, in some regards, is, is one of those components that you can really cut corners with if you're trying to be on a budget. Yes. Um, so this one it includes a 300-watt power supply and uh, another one of those things where it's like I really had to find <laughs> something to sacrifice in order to get all the other great Ooh. hardware that's in there. 40 bucks on the case and the power supply. And the power supply. I was really, really um, pinching pennies at this point. Yeah. But uh, but I don't know. It has 52 reviews for four eggs. I mean, when in doubt, look at the eggs. Sure, every every case scenario is different, but um, I felt like this this might be okay. For this for system, a low power, for, for a this really system, low power system, a 300 watt power supply is probably going to be fine. Oh, for sure. I um, added that up. And that, that was, gra that was granted, I mean, that is, that is going to be like, you know, number one or near number one on your, on your upgrade, upgrade list, list is going to be getting that power supply yeah, out of there. For sure. Um, but uh, nice to get all, all that stuff and a 240 gig SSD for, for 400 bucks. That's pretty nice. Good yeah. job, Kyle. Thank you. Um, I'm curious because I know there's there's lots of alternatives, and with the Absolutely. G the G thirty two fifty eight, I've had like at first I was really happy about it, but then it like of course it came out in the same year that like quad core started becoming actually somewhat important um, for 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 gaming. I mean, granted, there's still tons of games that aren't optimized for quad core at all at all, but Battlefield right. four is a big one that's out there. Far Cry four. Far Cry Far Cry four. So. That's why the G3258 option has been one that's been like a little bit more hesitant to offer. But mm -hmm. if you're not playing high-end games and if, if you're building a $400 computer, you're not going to be playing, you know, you're not building this to play Battlefield 4 or Far right. Cry 4 at, at max res, and then it's a great choice. And uh, I'm curious what the AMD alternative to this one would be. In yeah. the future, we should do this one and we'll have like, we'll have a battle with it. Ooh, red we'll versus blue. 
Fire Red, versus Water. Fire versus Blue or something like that. Because with AMD, um, for roughly the same price for motherboard and uh, processor, uh, you can get a quad core. Yeah, and I true. I'm completely blanking on which SKU of CPU I'm, I'm thinking of. I think it's an uh, AM3 Plus, not a not an FM2 Plus. But okay. anyway, but nice. Uh, there's a $400 computer that you guys should all go buy. I don't know. You guys right? also let me know. Let me know what you guys think of the computer. I know you guys have probably already commented. I just missed it in the chat. But well, yeah, we got some good comments. Some people were impressed. Um, Sweet. But yeah, I mean. I think the uh, the SSD in there, like this, would be a great computer for like even take that video card out and for three hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. This is a great Works simple little, basic little computer for anyone who just HGPC, needs something for like sure. you, you know HTPC or parents or grandparents or something. You know, if exactly. you're not going to be gaming, that G thirty two fifty eight has an integrated graphics too. That is right. And uh, you'd be all set for that. So. So this, I think I think I think next week my build a rig segment should be a three hundred dollar grandparent PC, and I'll grand. just remove the the two fifty X. Okay. Done. All right, and uh, third segment moving on here, we've got another uh, round of face off. Return where, of the classic. Where Paul and I, Return of the classic, where Paul and I go head to head right. in a, a, sh a crappy <laughs> two player game online, and and then something bad happens to the loser. Oh, um, did you choose? The... I haven't I haven't picked There's the bad thing. There's nothing down there. I that's, know. I, I didn't have time. I was just I couldn't think the... of anything bad enough because so far in the last two episodes you've lost. So I was trying to think of something really bad this time. Did I lose both? Have I lost? You did. I'm you lost. Two so you far? lost uh, slime volleyball, and you lost at uh, Pac-Man. Well, that's because both of those games you had gone in and practiced extensively. I did not beforehand. Well, I'm, I'm a slime ball veteran. All right. Well, if we're gonna be playing some uh, quop this we're time quop. around, <laughs> then I better get in game ready. I have a Lagunitas stout here. Ooh, delicious. Great stout for any, anyone who's and, interested. And I have, uh, in case you're wondering, my, I'm drinking Stone Enjoy By. This is like one of their branding things where it's like, let's make it as fresh as possible and force people to drink it by a certain date uh, to get the, the fullest, freshest experience. This is Enjoy By February 14th. So this is actually like almost a month old. It's like two months, or two weeks old. Pretty decent pour. Cheers. Cheers. To all of you as well. Mm hmm. Oh, it's so good. Just so good. All right, so we're gonna play some quap. Guys, let us know in the uh, the chat right now, right now, what the loser has to do. Nothing vulgar. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah we need we need suggestions in chat for what I. It's hard to think up something like that on the spot because it's got to be like what, like a bad, like a consequence. Yeah. It's got to be bad enough for it to be a legitimate consequence. There's a fine line with yeah. punishment, indeed. Um, I love lamp. Um, while we're waiting for you guys to shower us with your fantastic ideas for the consequence, right. I'm also going to mention that this week we're using a webcam to broadcast, which is why we haven't gone had gotten to go over there and switch off the camera uh, at all, or switch it back on from turning off. Right. Uh, we do have a new camera that we're going to start to use next week. It hasn't arrived yet, and hopefully that one will solve all of our problems. Uh, the webcam's doing a great job so far. It's probably just not quite as as sharp as uh, as the DSLRs were. All right, so we've got are, some insane suggestions. What are I really like shave shave their face. Shave their face? We have to shave our face. No. <laughs> what do you mean no? If if I hadn't branded this, then yes, we could have. But this is like how are how are people going to You're you're a man. It'll grow back by your next video. How will people buy You're a my, hairy white are, man. These are inside out. Don't be a baby. I'm not That's not I even, I will look 12 if I shave. Sh Neither of those are my shirts. <laughs> I was trying to do a shameless product placement of my shirts, which I had conveniently placed there, but those are just normal shirts without my logos God, on them. All right, um, so wait, we're, no, we're not shaving. I, um, thought, I thought that was a great idea. Um, okay, other ones include someone gets to drink someone else's beer. That wouldn't work for me because I have to drive home. Yeah, Cal's got to drive home. <laughs> I would, I would Cal. Cal's a DD for today. Start next week. He's next week's stream drunk. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we already halfway do that. Sort of. Um, Somewhat. Double, triple. Maybe we should just play the goddamn play the, game. <laughs> play the effing game. Shut mm. up. All right. I don't know. I like, I like the shave, man. I like the shave. People like I, the webcam. I have to make videos tomorrow. <laughs> I can't. No one will notice. Everyone will notice. I would see if something like it's just something like a, a shave, something that's gonna have a lasting effect. Like I'm, I'm not a, opposed to that, but you can't spring it on me. I have to be mentally prepared. Oh wow! I have to. 
You were so inflexible. I know. Exactly. That's how I get out of things all the time. Matt, Matt Geek said, right. if, if you lose the soul patch, your channel's doomed. That's, that is true. <laughs> that is true. All right, so uh, Quop is a QP... No, I, I'm I'm gonna be O and P. It's Q O and P. Which is the How calves. difficult can it be? I'm gonna it's be the, the calves and you're gonna be the thighs. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I thought I was gonna say oh, I was gonna just... suggest you do like three runs and, and we'll record your best score and then I'll do three you runs. You realize I've never played this before. It I doesn't know, matter. I you know can, I've seen I've played it a million times. I have it no idea any... how it works. <laughs> no idea. Alright, alright. It's just there's no me real mechanic to it. Well, and I'm sure a lot of you at home will be like, yeah, there's a mechanic. It's physics-based. It's, physics. it's a physics-based shooter you. without guns. <laughs> you On a track with the runner. All right. And buttons to control their legs. <laughs> All right, let's 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 do it. Okay. You're See ready. what you're made of. Wait, oh, I'm starting? I don't yes. even get to... All right. You know, <laughs> oh, it's you your place, yeah. Again. Hold on. Take control. Ideally, you'll run 100 meters. Mm-mm. Uh, I'm already. All right, point three. There we go, point three. I'm recording this. Why? Point three. Why did I die? Press space to restart. Sure. Now, I so saw what I get three shots at this. Yeah. And are we doing cumulative? Or just the the the, the longest single run? <laughs> you really thought this out, didn't you? Let's Kyle? do let's do let's do cumulative. <laughs> cumulative. Because that's right. what I planned initially. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So you have zero point three. Uh, Wow. Oh, I got 1.3 there. Wow, He's you like... I th I'm, I think he hyperextended You like quadrupled your score. Something, In there. one run, you're that getting pretty exponentially good. good at this. So in the next round, I should make the full thousand meters. That's right. Is that even possible in this game? Some... I, I bet there's YouTube videos of people just running. <laughs> like freaking... <laughs> point two. Just straight back onto his head. Oops. Uh, this game is fascinating. All right. There's no way this game. You, I don't even need to record better. your score because it was so bad. <laughs> I feel, I feel like I need to double check what Kyle's planning for, for face off. I think you got one point. Maybe vet it ahead of time. Four? Let's see. I don't know. You got one point four or one point five. I got point three, point two, and one point something. One point three. So. You didn't do, oh, I'm so a, you got like one point eight. Yes. All you're right, not fine. even calculating. It this won't matter, me. Paul. Just, just. Is Kyle just, just expertly wait. like runs along? <laughs> so doing backflips. To say nothing of the fact that you have me here to start it for you, whereas I had to use my hand over oh, here to start yes, the game. Yes, yes, of course. There's so Taking many excuses. Every advantage possible. All right, let's do this. All right, all right. Um, moving along, moving along. You ready? Wait, why aren't my messages? And go. Up? There we go. You're starting. Right, you get one point off. Here we go. Watch this. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna beat your best. It's all about. You're going backwards. Yeah, that's part of the plan. I'm gonna psych you out. I did not know that you could just juggle along on your knees and uh, do splits. You should have researched this. Because I knew it was I've, happening. I've already beat you <laughs> in my first run. Two meters! Alright, Kyle wins. Let me just fall over. Yeah, but I need this to fall is, over. This is... Because if I don't... You stood back up! Oh, no, get back down. Oh, you could still go backwards. Oh! You could still... You have clearly oh played God. this. No, I haven't. Much more than I. Ever I haven't. Had. I'm just, I'm just naturally good at games. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain this. Is, this is just the type of thing that comes naturally to a person. Oh my right God! Now. Look at me go! Look uh, at me go! Uh, uh, you got seven freaking uh, meters, dude. Bummer. That is actually the best I've ever done in this game. Believe it or not. I usually do what you do. I'm gonna go with not. I, don't <laughs> I swear to God. I, you, I'm usually I swear terrible. To God, I've impressed myself. This game. Well, All thankfully, right. so Paul will shave his soul patch yeah. uh, tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. That was agreed upon. Uh, or or Kyle gets to draw one thing on your forehead. Uh, okay. The forehead drawing thing can be done when you're doing B half. <laughs> Because I'd be cool with it for the rest of your on show. On my segment. But with no explanation for my half of the show, <laughs> I don't think that's the best way. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll report back to you guys and let you know uh, the, what Paul's punishment was. Okay. I will I can cheat you with a Nerf gun. That'd be fun. A Nerf gun? Yeah. First I thought you said Earth gun. 
Something just in throw, Minecraft. Throw rocks at you. <laughs> <laughs> just, just throw rocks at you. Earth. Okay. Cool. All right. That was a fun. That was a fun round. I'm glad we played Quop. Yeah. Uh, all right. And now let's get on to a more serious note with uh, some news, some tech news. I've got a little bit of stuff from GDC that's going on right now, as well as uh, one more hardware type story because um, I couldn't fit it all in in hot and heavy hardware. And then we'll finish it off with some space news. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't fit all that hot and heavy harder, couldn't hardware. Couldn't fit all that hot and heavy hardware. In. He tried. Yeah, I know. Just couldn't. I know. Couldn't do it. All right. Bandwidth limitations. Button. All right. Yeah, that this button. first one uh, I found uh, is, is about Valve, and they announced their Steam Link and Source 2 engine. Yeah, Steam Link is actually a product, and this, they announced this at GDC. Uh, it's a new product from Valve that's been designed to extend a user's stream experience that's not where that was supposed to go sorry to, please continue to, to, to any room in their house basically by um by excuse me by streaming <laughs> steam content from any pc uh, across the, their, their same local home home network so what i think of this is it's kind of like uh it just connects to your tv via hdmi and it's a stream box and you can stream all of your games from your pc to whatever tv in your house is that is that the impression you got? Yeah, it's That's like a, it's a fifty dollars streaming device. Right. So, um, but it's designed specifically to work with Steam. Yeah. And um, which is seems, awesome. Seems pretty cool. Because because right now I can stream any Steam game from from my 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 personal desktop computer to my my TV in my living room because I have an HTPC hooked up to it. But here's, instead here's, of having an HTPC, you could just get a, a Steam Link for fifty whatever dollars. Hold on, though, Kyle. Hold on. Breaking oh. news. Okay. Uh, Steam Link has been canceled. What? I, no, I'm just kidding. Jesus. I'm kidding. I'm assuming that because Steam Link, which used to be a link to uh, the Steam Store where you could buy it, oh, is a different Steam Link. Not there anymore. The what? link to Steam Link. Is that that's what you're talking about? No, this the one. Link. Yeah, I link? clicked on this one mm. earlier and it linked to the actual product page on Steam. Okay, so Steam Link is still for sure, but Steam Link Link has been canceled. The Steam Link Link to Steam Link <laughs> okay. uh, is no longer linking. <laughs> All right, cool. So some other information about it. Uh, it does support Steam machines. Wow, that's surprising. <laughs> Linux PCs, Windows PCs, and Macs at 20. Uh, I'm sorry, at 20. At 1080p, 60 hertz. Beautiful. Uh, with low latency. I think that's really nice. Uh, it will retail for $50 in the U.S., and it will be also be available with the Steam controller for an additional $50. So, it's 50 bucks more for the controller? Yeah. Yeah, that seems a bit that's steep. Just, that's a little... Uh, Maybe it's just got some really good I don't good know. I mean, the, the Xbox embedded. controller was 40 bucks for Controllers a are long, cheap, man. A long time. Yeah, I, I don't know. If it's... Okay. If it's... If it's I, I, I don't know. I was just... I'm, I'm in the PC mentality where things should be cheaper, I guess, a little right. bit. No, yeah, absolutely. So 50 bucks seems a lot, but I guess when you compare it, if it's really well made, but then, and if it's one of those types of controllers that just last forever and is right. super rugged and all that kind of stuff, then then, then maybe that's more worth it. True. Yeah. And, and and I also have to ask, I wonder if, if you can use any other controllers with it. I would think so, right? Like, if you, you can you use, other use like, an Xbox 360 controller or... I mean, it's PC, right? So um, that's a good question. So that'll be interesting. It's a streaming device, right? And who knows? I mean, it might be running some like little, little basic like Linux, uh, based thing in there that it runs in order right. to accept the stream and display it on the screen. In which case, it might not just allow you to plug and play in a USB device. Right. I'm not sure though. I'm that's so TBD on that, yeah. but uh, very interesting nonetheless. And the Source Two engine. A uh, successor to the original Source Engine, which is very um, known for creating games like Counter Strike and Half Life Two mm -hmm. and uh, Half Life Three, to be determined, not yet confirmed. Um, but that's that's cool. It's it's designed for both professional developers as well as gamers um, who who might be develop uh, interested in developing their own games in the future. Um, and I think it's going to be made free for content developers, so open source pretty much. That's cool. Yeah. Sweet. That's that's all I have for that article. Uh, uh, the next one is EVGA announcing um, their GTX 960 with four gigs of RAM. So four, four gig frame buffer. Four gigs. Yeah, it's impossible. Four legit gigs. That's weird. That that's weird. That this 960 will have more so memory the nine, than any the 960 is gonna have more memory than that. Yeah, so that's that's kind of funny. It's kind of interesting. Um, so obviously this is going to lead to things like higher texture qualities, um, better 4K resolution gaming performance, and things like that. Uh, they're also claiming that the cooler's new memory MOSFET 
um, MOSFET cooling plate will, will cool the MOSFETs on the card about 11 degrees Celsius cooler than their, uh, their current ACX 2.0 cooler. So this is actually going to ship with their ACX 2.0 plus. There's a lot of pluses going around in the, the video That's card market. It's a great market. way to improve a product. So you add a plus, <laughs> makes it better That's all right. around, improves cooling, thermal dissipation. That's right. Um, I want to do a shout out uh, to Fractal Josh because he just joined chat. Hey um, If nothing else to say that yes, Josh, we plugged your talk that you're doing with uh, with with I the, I the Greek. Greek. Yeah, we did uh, tomorrow. That was the first thing we said. So you're getting like front page anyone, exposure. Anyone anyone who goes and views that stream uh, is probably sent by us. Yes. Or just wants to see you guys talking about stuff. I feel like I was going somewhere else with that, but uh, I also want to say <laughs> uh, clearly the some, only more, two some more shout outs to other people in chat because we have some 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 long time regulars here and I like to give you guys props. Uh, yeah. Reviews by Gary is here. Mm. Uh, I am apropos, uh, aka I'm Paul. a propos. I am a propos is also here. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Strider, of course, is always Strider. Man geek. Strider and uh, Rooster was uh, is, I thought I yeah, said Rooster was Rooster's in, in chat. I don't know if he's still in here. Uh, Strider and Rooster had and Sergeant Ballistic were sprung. Uh, we sprung mod duties on them last week, and they're back again, <laughs> even though we have not asked them to. They are the or best. Them they're the best kind of mods. So the mods you don't, don't even know were there. Uh, <laughs> wait, who, who else did you say? Sergeant was here? Ballistic. Sergeant is Ballistic's here. in here. What's up, Brian? Thanks I don't for see joining. Kitty though. Kitty's not here. Kitty. Um, and yeah, especially since um, in about a half an hour or so, not that any of you should be aware of this, uh, Nvidia's starting an event, but um, <laughs> ours is is way better. No, sure. They don't have anything to, to talk about that's Can't important. Can't step to this. All right, Kyle, you have any more stories on your stories? <sighs> Last story, story stories? of my segment. Totally switching gears here from <laughs> pure DIY PC tech is the story that I found on a big-ass black hole that was discovered in the early universe. Okay. So right, right after the Big Bang happened, about 875 million years after that occurred, uh, this big ass black hole was created it was, it's a super uh super massive so this is the chart right that's that is, the the big red one that's the big I, red one i didn't one. look at the chart it's, you didn't look at the chart I, i'd assume this is your story I'd how do i know that's more about the this biggest you i'd assume that's the one all right, right. are you no you, one would ever do a story on the little green one are you even going to talk about the eddington limit no are you yes Okay, you can fill me in on the Eddington limit because this was oh, the last Kyle. story. Obviously, this was the last story that I this researched. This is Kyle's filler story. No, no, no. I was in your kitchen <laughs> writing the story, and you're like, "Are you ready to go live?" And I'm like, "I'm done my writing, my last story." I, and I saw Eddington limit, and I was like, "Oh hell no! I'm not gonna about to figure out this new, new terminology okay. in space." I will briefly explain from the like two seconds I spent reading the story what the Eddington limit is. Okay. So when a black hole okay. gets to a certain size, right? Uh, what, what we've what we've learned about black holes more recently, I'm not going to be very specific here because I haven't done any research, is that it used to be thought that everything that goes in that passes the event horizon on a black hole gets sucked into the center and is gone forever. And uh, that, was, conception. that was a, that was a, uh, a a quandary for astrophysicists right. because. Um, that exhibits a loss of information, which is uh, against one of the basic laws of physics. Right. I apologize to any physicists if I'm terribly off here. Apologies. So there is actually a halo around black holes where light escapes. Right. Um, I so, did read that. So what the Eddington limit is, is that as uh, a black hole gets bigger and bigger and the rate of acceleration of mass getting pulled into it increases... Um, the amount of light that has to be given off on the outside also increases relatively to that because more stuff getting pulled in means more stuff has to come out. However, the light coming out, and this is where it gets a little weird, actually has a gravitation, like, I don't want to say a gravitational pull, actually has an effect on the stuff going in as well. Okay. So you can only get it to a certain size before the stuff being pulled in and the stuff being pulled out kind of equalize. That's what's known as the Eddington limit, and that is what is... Theoretically, at least at this point, the largest size that a black hole can ever get, and this black hole uh, is doesn't it have something to do with radiation, like some. Yeah, radiation. So the radiation is the right. radiation of light or the halo at the edge. Gotcha. It might not. It might be something other than just light, but it constricts um, it after a certain point. Yeah. So, okay. So that's that's my really basic understanding, <clears throat> and then there might be some errors in there. But okay. Um, well, yeah, but obviously yeah. that very that very much ties in with this article because the the, the supermassive black hole that we're talking about here is pretty much as big as we've seen it in the past. Um, so it's not unprecedented. 
we've seen other supermassive black holes this big. But what's interesting about it is that it, it's about 12.8 billion light years away from Earth. Oh. Which, which means, you know, you can measure the the age of something in space based on how many light years away it is, based on the speed of light, right? So, um, basically, uh, it was it was formed 875 million years after the Big Bang, which is only about 6% of, of the universe's life um, when, when compared to its 13.8 billion uh billion light year age so so it's it's like it's like a baby it's like a it's like the grand it's like a great great grandfather so it's a really old it's a really old black hole really old black hole is there any way you can (laughs) somehow tie that into like a a mild insult against josh or something (laughs) i can't no not not on the stream (laughs) well yeah Sorry, Stay we tuned for the after party. We don't quite have that, that, that level of wit. Right. All right. Exactly. So um, that's big ass black hole story. Right. So uh, that's pretty much it. Cool stuff. I don't want to. I don't want to drag on about black hole stuff. <laughs> no. Because Josh is in the in the chat. No. No. We don't. No, what we kind don't. of atrocities he'll he'll come up with next. So is this the end of your side this of the is, show? Con- this concludes my side A end of side A of my segment so be sure to stay tuned for paul's segment which yes. is coming up right now and Just if you guys are watching this go ahead as and the e- archive eject that tape eject flip side it a, over flip it over then you get side b side b on paul's channel paul paul's hardware also feel free to buy a shirt from the awesome sauce merch store and link links in the description as well as a, a paul's hardware shirt from the, the paulshardware.net store. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching live we're going to cut for just a moment and then we'll be right back with side b that's right thanks for watching see you in just a moment 